I'm Tony Naoshin. I like to introduce myself as a degrowth and climate justice activist. I also work for an international NGO fighting climate change. We need an alternative economic system to fight the climate crisis because the main reason why we are in this crisis is the current economic system. We have always prioritized profit over people, over the interest of the planet, and that has put us where we are today. If you want to step back a bit and trying to understand the problem, we would see that the big fossil fuel industries that are the main reasons why we are in this climate crisis, they already knew from the 1960s that their business is going to create this crisis today. But what they did is they could use their money and power to lobby against the science. They have invested a lot of money to um, ensure that people are not knowing about the reasons behind climate uh, crisis and what are the uh, driving forces of it. And if you look like why could they do it? is because the economic system that we have today, we allow power and we allow business interest over people's interest. And then that's why we are talking about changing it. And if you want to change it, we have to then look at the economic system that we have and think how we can change and fix the problems that it um, creates today. If you look into the term degrowth, it necessarily is talking about something anti-growth. Why is that? Um, as a student of economics, or even if not, you would always hear in all our analyses and economic newspapers, there is a constant obsession about growth. All the governments, they analyze or they rate their per performance if the economy grew last year or how much the economy grew. What degrowth does is they question this obsession with growth. What the degrowth movement is trying to say is that if an economy is doing good or not, the, the analysis of growth or this um, parameter, of, uh, parameter of growth has nothing to do with it. We need to look if the people who are living in that economy is doing better. So we need to shift our focus from this obsession of growth towards a more well-being. If there is the people living on that economy are happy if their well-being is being protected. And at the same time, degrowth says we cannot grow infinitely in a finite planet. So if we keep obsessing about growth each year and each year, where does this growth come from? This growth comes from taking materials from the planet and producing from it. But now at this point where we are, the planet cannot regenerate and support all our needs. There is an indicator that says how much we use in a year and how much Earth can regenerate. At this point, we have been using resources already in three or four months that takes the planet Earth to regenerate in a year. That means we are already using up our one year's budget of resources that Earth can providing, provide us. And we are kind of putting it in a place where it's kind of crashing on its own. Because of this reason, degrowth focuses and emphasizes on the fact that we, as human societies and our economies, we need to shrink or downscale our size, downscale how much we are taking up space in this planet and acknowledge that all our other beings, animals and all other different species have the same right to coexist with us in this planet. Now you might be wondering that, okay, if we shrink, like Tony, you're talking about shrinking our economies, but even in the current economy, we haven't been able to provide food, shelter, education, healthcare for all the people in this world. We want to look at the mismanagement or the differences that we already have in the current system we would see that we have a huge amount of wealth in one side of our economy that are being generated. And on the other side, we have a big number of people who are not getting the basic needs met for their lives, for their living. And the problem, this problem needs to be solved not by growing our economies, but really making sure that what we are producing is being uh, shared in an efficient way. So that what degrowth necessarily talks about is that the economies in today's world, the global north countries, their economy size needs to shrink in certain ways and there needs to be a redistribution among economies. With degrowth, we want to focus on that. We want to prioritize well-being over profit and growth-based accumulation. The problem is what we are producing now and with this obsession of growth, we are allowing for a much bigger amount of wealth being accumulated to a very tiny proportion of the human population. 
Degrowth also challenges the narrative of this very high standard of living that we have at the moment. But what is the problem with this narrative? If you look that this standard that we use all over the world as a good life has been done or achieved only for a tiny pro proportion of the human population and through a very long oppressive process. I'm talking about the history of colonization. If we see that very high standard of living that we see in certain parts of the world population is being ensured by taking um, resources from different parts of the world. For example, taking minerals from uh, Africa, from South Africa, um, South America, using uh, laborers from South Asia, China, and all of these huge um, um, processes that allows for a tiny percentage of the population have a very high consumption and a less life standard that we think should be standard for all human beings on the planet is not sustainable. This system was established through a process of colonization over 600 years. What we are talking about today is that we need to rethink and we need to shift our focus from consumption-based economy towards a more care-based economy and focus on well-being rather than consumption. Degro tries to address that and acknowledge that. And what we talk about is that we need to decolonize our economies and acknowledge that there needs to be a reparation over the years to do right what has been done, done wrong in the past. In summary, what the degrowth movement is trying to focus is we must remember that hum the economies we have are embedded in nature. It's not possible to have infinite growth on a finite planet and our economies must focus on human and well-being rather than profit and growth. By doing this, it's possible to start living, reorganize our economies and be sustainable and give all other species enough space in this planet so we can coexist and have a sustainable future.